Howdy all you delicious people, I am here today to review Avengers Infinity War. So right off the bat, I am going to talk about this movie cryptically and then spoiler wise, but justifiably also, I am probably also going to say something controversial here. I truly believe now watching this movie, I think that Infinity War is probably hands down the best Avengers movie out of out of Avengers to Endgame. Like I think Infinity War is probably the event, the best Avengers movie. And people would disagree with me with that or people would agree with me with that because they're like, yeah, like Endgame is too long or Endgame is kind of like there's some dead spots in there. Uh, like, I know Infinity War does have a ton of problems to it. Uh, someone didn't go for the head. Uh, there isn't certain characters that people want in this. That's okay. Uh, like, like, yeah, they don't have the one character that I would have liked in here. Mm, I would have, I would have liked to have seen certain so-and-so be here, but they're not. Yeah. Um, like some people might, uh, think people had made a lot of mistakes in this film, which justifiably so they probably did. And I will eventually get to that, hopefully within this review, because there is a lot to cover. There's a lot of ground to cover. Uh, but I think hands down infinity war best movie. It covers so much stuff in one film. Uh, so it's going to probably be probably be difficult to cover everything and eventually there's going to be some lost gaps in my brain of everything that is to go on and hopefully I don't have to rebuttal or back up too much uh but hopefully I nail everything plus also uh I'm also doing this a little bit different if anybody ever like watched my original review I'm actually coming in here with a little bit more information and I'm coming in here with a little bit more of names of things, even much more so than, oh, this is Captain America, Steve Rogers, if you didn't know. Spoilers! Look at his gear! Spoilers! I don't want to know this! Then don't come in here. You can go into the movie and then come back and then go, oh, okay, I get what all of this is. All right. Eventually, like, you've had to have seen something like this any time of which that you've seen an Infinity War somewhere. And, like, this has been out for a while now. But, anyways, so what is to cryptically happen as much as I can in this movie? Tell you. Uh, for the very beginning of this. So, uh... Really, the most important thing to probably watch like going right into this because it'll feel like a smooth transition is actually Thor Ragnarok. I recently watched Thor Ragnarok and then I'm watched, I'm watching this now and then I'm like, yeah, like I like, thank God I just recently watched Ragnarok because I'm like, yeah, like I feel like this is a really smooth transition from that movie to this. And then eventually we like, I felt that I didn't need I felt like I didn't need to watch, like, uh, like I guess you could probably say Civil War, but I didn't watch that. I haven't watched that recently, but I know exactly what all happens in that movie. So I get the context of it, like, I get the, like, what they're talking about. Uh, but I feel like I didn't need to watch a prerequisite movie to understand completely what's going on in this film. But I just felt that I just probably just needed to watch Ragnarok and I would have been covered uh, for most of this. Uh, really, you could probably watch uh, the Black Panther movie, maybe just because you can and then go into this movie. But again, like I didn't feel like that was something I desperately needed to watch because I could still understand what's going on for a bulk of this. So... Uh, maybe Thor Ragnarok, maybe that's probably about it, but I can't think of anything else anybody would need prerequisites on. So what's kind of the heavily cliff, uh, cliff notes of this movie? So Thor is on a journey for some kind of weapon. We'll get to that. 
uh, uh, Peter and uh, Tony are to go out into space. They're going to have a space adventure. Eventually bump into maybe some Guardians at some point. Uh, really, uh, Thanos is going to quite possibly get almost every single stone of the Infinity Gauntlet quite possibly in this film uh, with the exclusion of one because off-screen things happen. Was it covered? Was it covered anywhere? Could anyone say yes? Then, like, where is that footage? That beautiful bean footage. I would have easily, like, seen that and enjoyed that, but eh, we didn't get it. Uh... Thor, or Thor, uh, Hulk is having some issues in this movie, uh, some transformational issues, and so really he just becomes a guy that needs to be in a, uh, a bust of some kind of suit, let's just say. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, Vision is severely weak in this film, uh, he's kind of just... A guy that's there but i'm like god vision you should be like the strongest person but if anything you're like the severely weakest <laughs> severely like hilariously the weakest and it's like it's like god smackingly just why is this character even in this film i don't understand uh because it's like this guy is just so nerfed and it's so just heartbreaking um but anyways, uh, like, I'm just trying to figure out exactly how exactly everything is going to be broken down perfectly because I'm trying to figure out in my head, like, okay, where's the, the pathway to go into this? Because I think it's that coveted time yet again to go into spoiler time. Uh, but yeah, so the guardians are in this movie the guardians of the galaxy if you may have seen one movie of that i think you'll be fine you'll be set uh even though it does kind of cover both films you could probably just watch one and you'll be set uh you could probably watch just every origin of all these characters and you should probably be fine like i think really uh iron man 3 might be a <laughs> may barely be a thing that you could probably go into all three iron men and figure out what all happens with tony because eventually you're gonna have to especially once you uh get closer to end game it's probably best to watch everything once you get closer to end game because there's a reason for that because you'll invest with every single one of these characters but anyways i think that it's that coveted time because i'm going to take a lot of time to probably review this film so get ready, because it's that coveted time, yet again, to go and do the coveted. Spoiler time. Spoiler time. It's about the time you need to spoil this movie. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm freaking out. Like, because I'm like, oh my god. I'm going to, like, I'm going to F up so much stuff. So we're going to go into it. So, right out of the gate... The very first thing that we are to see in this movie is to be a distress call from in, coming from the Asgardians from the ship the Statesman, which is the ship that Thor and his people were retrieved out of from Asgard. So, uh, so after, or so we're seeing the aftermath of Thanos coming through this Asgardian ship statesman and taking it over, overrunning it, or whatever you want to call it. And so you just see the onslaught of numerous Asgardian people there. And so uh, Ebony Ma is to open this up with his speech about how all these Asgardians are to be one uh, part of Thanos and his children and even in death and whichever. Because eventually it's kind of inevitable 
that Thanos will be the most powerful thing here. And so really you just might as well all just like go along with Thanos because it's kind of an, an inevitable thing because he already has legitimately one uh, Infinity Stone that he already has from Xandar. So, uh, so we are to have, uh, of course, Loki show up because really just like Thor is to be, uh, like kind of just like grabbed and to be just kind of like slugged around like he's a thing of luggage to Thanos. And so Loki is to uh, show up and say, hey, hi, hey, everyone, how's it going? And so Thanos is to want the Tesseract and Thor is to mention, well, like the Tesseract is on Asgard, it's destroyed. And so easily we have Loki who is to be on the side of seemingly Thor and Thor is to start to get tortured by the one, uh, the one power stone that Thanos is to, or, uh, uh, yeah, power stone that uh, that Lo that Thanos is to possess. So Loki is to go and present to Thanos the uh, the of course Tesseract, and so shortly thereafter that Loki is to remind Thanos that hey, like. Uh, here's the thing, like, we have a Hulk. And all of a sudden, like, Hulk hulks up in front of Thanos and starts just beating the crap out of him. But Ebony Ma is pausing, I think, uh, Cole Obsidian because, uh, like, because Ma is just like, hey, let Thanos have his fun. So... Hulk is starting to pound up Thanos, but that is to really just do nothing because Thanos can just swat Hulk like a fly, sadly enough. So, after Hulk is to be taken down, we all of a sudden have Heimdall, who is just kind of like on the ground, just hurt, and he is to use all of his black magic to send Hulk back to Earth to make it to Doctor Strange. And so... Now we have... Uh, and now we have it to where... They are to just... To go and have Thanos... Uh, go and kill Heimdall... And stab him... And then also, like, basically, uh, with a huge amount of metal, shackle up Thor so that way uh, he can't even talk or anything. And, or before he is to not be able to talk, Thor is to tell Thanos that you will die for that, for killing Heimdall. And then his uh, mouth is to be, like, covered. So... Now Ma is to pick up the Tesseract and give it to Thanos. And so Thanos, of course, is to get the Tesseract and put it onto his gauntlet. And so now Loki is bargaining to Thanos to be like, hey, like, if anything, like, uh, like, I'm willing to be a ambassador to Earth. Like, I can be like a guide and... And they're like, well, what, like, what experience do you have, like, on Earth? Like, is, like, I guess failure is an, ex is a, is experience. And Loki's like, well, experience is experience. It's like, 
I've been to Earth. You people haven't. So... And so now Loki is to mention every single, like, thing he is to have as a... Uh, as a prerequisite of everything that he has that he's mentioning and he's kind of looking at Thor while he does it and he is to mention it's like well like I'm the god of mischief I'm the son of Odin looking at Thor and so Loki is to all of a sudden have a dagger appear from behind him and Thor is watching Loki I guess try to make a run for Thanos and so Loki is to try to shove a dagger into Thanos's neck and Thanos had saw that coming from a million miles away and so Thanos is to grab Loki and basically just break his neck and so Thanos is to say there won't be any resurrections this time and so Thanos is to use his power to completely just annihilate this spaceship, leaving Thane, leaving Thor and all the other Asgardians just floating into space to eventually be uh, waiting for the Guardians of the Galaxy to get their, uh, get their mayday and make their way to them, but eventually we'll get to that. So, transitioning, so, good God. So now Hulk, who turns into Banner, is now at the Sanctum Sanctorium with uh, Doctor Strange and Wong. Uh, Doctor Strange is to evidently want to go with Wong to get a sandwich, and it seems that Wong doesn't have any money. And so... Uh, and so, like, I guess he only has, like, a ruby, which is, like, a buck. And so, Doctor Strange is to kind of walk down these stairs to all of a sudden have Hulk fall through this Sanctum Sanctorium to then uh, appear as Banner to say, hey, like, we need to go and get Tony. Like, we need to go and, like, Thanos is coming. And so Strange is like, okay, well, that's easy enough. So, uh, so Strange is to go and retrieve Tony. Tony is talking to Pepper about that he had a bizarre dream where in his dream, like he needed to pee in his dream. And then when he woke up, I guess he really did have to pee. And so, like, what this whole thing symbolizes is that uh, Iron Man was thinking in his dream that he was going to have a child. And so maybe Tony thought when he was to wake up that Pepper would be pregnant with a child. With uh, a boy that they were to name after some bizarre relative of Pepper's. And so... Doctor Strange is to get to Tony, uh, and, like, also Pepper is to talk about the, the, the new chess piece that Tony is to talk about before Strange shows up. Let's, let's get to that. So, Tony is to mention that it's, like, a nano housing that it's just there to protect him, and it's also to protect her. And, like, it's just, like, a, like, a fail-safe kind of thing. It's just kind of, like, a, uh, like, just in case something is to be happening, they would be prepared. So, Strange goes and retrieves Tony and is to mention, like, okay, well, uh, like, uh, congratulations on the, the wedding and stuff like that. And so, I guess, maybe Strange wasn't invited or was invited, wasn't invited, I don't know. So, but strange is to mention, like, uh, Tony, you need to come with me because, like, this is, like, world-ending, uh, like, uh, implications that you need to come with me or the world might end. And so, Tony is like, okay, who are you? <laughs> and so... Uh, Tony is to make it into the Sanctum Sanctorium, 
and kind of hear through uh, Bruce because uh, Tony is to trust Bruce. And also Bruce came through the hole with Strange to hug Tony. And so Bruce is now uh, catching Tony up on Thanos and that he's coming. And that really... Uh, Bruce wants Tony to call the Avengers and Tony's like, yeah, like you haven't been here for a spell. Like I need to like catch you up. Like December, uh, <laughs> December, uh, the Avengers, they're toast. Like they're disassembled. Like we're no more. Like if anything, like, uh, me and, uh, Captain America aren't on speaking terms. So Really, uh, Bruce is like, well, like, but can you get to them? Can you get to him? Because, like, you, like, you need to call, t you need to call Steve. Tony, you need to call Steve. Like, this is, like, for anybody that, like, that you need to call, like, call them now. Like, whatever, wherever, like things are with anyone like you need to make amends because like this is big like this is world ending big business whichever so uh also like tony while like uh, strange is to talk about everything and uh bruce is to explain things eventually uh tony is like resting and kind of stretching on this like cauldron because he just went for a jog and so like Strange is like, could you not be resting on this cauldron right now? <laughs> kind of, like, eventually just kind of, like, capes, like, Tony off of the cauldron. And so, like, okay, all right, like, I'll do whatever you guys want. Uh, but the one thing that he doesn't want to really do is call up, uh, uh, call up Steve anytime soon. But there is something that prevents that. The, uh, the dropping of, uh, the, uh, Thanos' children. So we have, uh, Cull Obsidian and we have Ebony Ma drop onto the Sanctum Sanctorium and that causes, uh, uh, Strange, Wong, Iron Man, uh, and Bruce, who cannot change into Hulk, like everybody who I just was talking from before, is now heading to the streets to try to uh, prevent these Thanos children from coming and, and basically taking the Time Stone. So, all of a sudden, we are to see what is called a Q-ship. That is the circular ship that you are to see, like, that eventually Spider-Man is to get himself on. And so we are to see the Q-ship that is to come down onto Earth. And so uh, Spider-Man is to see this from his bus. And so Spider-Man is to tell Ned Leeds that he needs to cause a distraction on this bus so Peter can change into Spider-Man, like basically putting on a mask and getting out of this bus and go out of his way to go and find uh, what all is kind of like going crazy right now and eventually try to get onto the ship, but eventually that will happen. So, uh... So I'm trying to think if there is anything that eventually I need to uh, cover right away. Uh, so uh, we might come to like little tiny pauses in here because eventually like things will get really crazy. So, uh, so eventually uh, Iron Man is to eventually become Iron Man, but Hulk is not, go or Bruce is not becoming Hulk. And so, uh, Strange is getting his powers prepared, Wong is getting his powers prepared, Ma and Kull are to drop down, and so now this is a big fight, Kull is starting to, uh, come at these people, and Hulk can't 
Bruce can't change into Hulk. So, uh, Tony is telling uh, Bruce that it's like, hey, like turn turn into Hulk, like you're, uh, like you're making me look bad in front of the wizards, <laughs> and so. Uh, and so Bruce is like, well, I'm having like issues here. And so Strange just decides to teleport uh, Bruce to a different location. So uh, so that way he doesn't get harmed by either Cole or by uh, or by Ma. So if any, if like, let's uh, let's get through this. So eventually happens where uh where like call is doing most of the heavy lifting here and so eventually call is kind of running through uh iron man and trying to take him down and uh like some of or the wizards are taking or trying to take down ma because Ma is going and sending a, a bunch of spikes at the wizards, but the re, the wizards reflect that and try to hit Ma, and so like that kind of just doesn't really work out. So uh, Cull is trying to take down Iron Man, and eventually Spider Man is to come into fray, and now Tony is like, "Hey, like, what are you doing here?" and Spider-Man is like, well, hey, I was on a field trip and I just saw what was going on. So, uh, so eventually we have it to where, uh, there is eventually a fight between both Strange and Ma because Wong goes and tries to help out Iron Man. And so, uh, Strange is now fighting Ma and so... We have it to where Ma is kind of using his powers to eventually try to, like, suffocate Strange, like, crush Strange. And so when Ma is to try to get the amulet that Strange is to have, uh, his Sorcerer Supreme, Strange is to be like, <laughs> you're not going to easily just get this Sorcerer Supreme from me. If anything... The only way that you can take this from me is from me dying, from my death. And so, like, this is a charm that is, like, rather hard to uh, to do, but it's very uh, efficient. So, Ma is trying to, like, take all kinds of, like, uh, like pipes and, like, suffocate Strange and eventually, like, put him onto a slab of street and like rip the street out and like try to take ma uh or the uh, ma is trying to take strange back to uh the q ship and so uh and so <laughs> eventually we start to see just strange flying because eventually since Strange is hooked to this uh, piece of street, the cape is to leave with the Sorcerer Supreme. And so Iron Man is still fighting Cull and, uh, and going and calling out to Peter to go after the cape because that's the wizard. Help the wizard. So Spider-Man is going and... Uh, trying to either help out Doctor Strange's cape or help out try to get Strange from uh, from Ma's grasp. But eventually that leads both Peter and Strange being teleported up to the Q-ship where Ma is in there anyways. So, uh, so eventually Iron Man is still fighting out Kull and so eventually Wong is to appear to try and uh, magically teleport Cull to a different spot, an icy land of sorts. And so Iron Man is to tell Wong, it's like, hey, Wong, you're invited to my, uh, to my wedding. And so Iron Man shoots out to try to make it to the Q-ship that is in almost orbit now. 
And so Tony is now having to call out for the the Iron Spider armor uh, so that way Peter can be able to breathe on the Q-ship because Peter is just now like, uh, like spider webbing up the Q-ship because he wasn't fully teleported into the ship because all they needed was strange. They didn't need anything else. So... Peter has attached himself to this ar to this ship, and so Tony is going after him to try to uh, get this spider armor on Peter so he can breathe. And so once uh, Tony is to make it to the ship, and Peter is to get his spider armor, uh, Friday is telling uh, or. Tony is telling Friday to go and have Peter go back um, to Earth and like telling him, hey, Peter, goodbye. And so instead, Peter disobeys that order and eventually goes into being a stowaway in the Q ship. And so Tony makes it on to the ship and then we'll eventually get back to that. Uh, like, I'm going to put a pen in that, and I'll get back to that, I hope. Uh, so, because there's a lot to unpack with that, and I think I'm going to have to pause here, because I think it's that coveted time to take a second, reset, but also reset so I can get my bearings here. So let me pause here for a second. Okay, so now we transition into space, if we already weren't there already. And so... Now we are to introduce the Guardians of the Galaxy into this film. We are to have uh, we are to have Star Lord, who is to uh, cue us up to uh, the Rubber Man song, and so all the Guardians are supposedly singing along. Uh, Drax is sleeping. Groot is consistently playing this Defenders game or some kind of old-fashioned retro game that he's so hooked into and eventually he is to say something offensive to the rest of the group and then rocket is to just be like hey like as soon as you like started growing like uh like little like leaves like man did you just turn into quite a handful or whatever like really showing that i guess Groot is at actual puberty now and so Really, it's to uh, just kind of make a joke of the fact that, like, now that Groot is older, like, eventually he's becoming a problem child, I guess. So, uh, so let's get into it. So, the main thing is that the Guardians were to uh, have heard the distress call from the Asgardians, and so they're like, hey, like... We're going to go to this ship and we're probably going to take this ship from these people. And so, like, we don't know what to really expect. So have your mean faces on and, like, we'll just kind of see what happens when we get here and all the stuff that we can probably take from these people and so on and so forth. So once they are to actually get there, they see a complete shipwreck. And so they're like, well, I guess we're not going to really steal anything after all. And so all of a sudden we are to have Thor, who is to smack into the, um, uh, God, what is this ship called? Uh, the, oh my God, uh, who's the boss? Uh, God, uh. But he crashes into the Guardian's ship, let's just say. The Milano. There we go. The Milano. So when I say the Guardian's ship, I'm going to say Milano. Hopefully I'll remember that, but I probably won't. So, uh, so Thor smacks into the, the glass of the Guardian's ship. And Rocket says this hilarious line where he's like, Hey, get the wipers on! Like, get that thing off our ship! Like, but... Thor is to open an eye, and so they're like, oh my god, like, this guy is still alive. So they go and they retrieve him. So, uh, so they are to go and look at Thor, 
and they are to mention that uh like man like this guy like woo and so uh mantis is to go and like check his brain and to see that he's still alive and that he's in pain and all kinds of things and so star lord is just like well he just looks like a like a guy like me and drax is like no like you're a boy this uh this is a man like it's like a pirate had made love to an angel and <laughs> like i'm like okay sure so uh so all of a sudden we have like gamora who is starting to like touch onto thor and like star lord is just like hey like stop touching the god the god man <laughs> or whatever the man um and so uh eventually we get to where like people are kind of accusing star lord of starting to pack on the pounds like drax is starting to saying like yeah your your chin is a little <laughs> and so like star lord is like okay all right like i'm gonna commit like i'm gonna get a bow flex and i'm gonna like <laughs> I'm going to take this seriously. And, like, Rocket is just, like, uh, you do realize that you can't, like, you can't eat, like, a, 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 like a, a dumbbell, do you? <laughs> like, you, you realize you can't eat that. Like, kind of really, like, saying that, like, Star-Lord has packed on the pounds and whatever, because sequel, whatever. So, so Star Lord is to desperately ask Mantis to wake up the God Man, and so Thor is to wake up in seemingly having some nightmare, and so Thor is to eventually mention like catch everybody up of what all is going on, and really people are like, oh Thanos is here, like. Well, he must not have much of the F Infinity Stones. And Thor is like, well, I'm sorry, but yeah, he does. Like, he already has Xandar because last week he wiped that place out and took that. And he also took the... Uh, so he already has the Power Stone. And he already has the Space Stone because he took it from Loki. And so now he's going to eventually go for the Reality Stone... And that's where uh, some of the Guardians are going to go, but Thor is to go another route. Uh, so, and of course, the Reality Stone is with the Collector. So now uh, half of the Guardians have to go to nowhere to go and try to collect the, uh, the Reality Stone from the Collector. So, uh, thank God I have a ton of just stuff that I, luckily because good god i would be so confused so uh so thor is to basically just see that it seems that rocket is like supposedly the ship's captain even though he's not really it's quill but like rocket is just like yeah like i'm your captain and i'm like like, yeah, Quill, shut up. I'm the captain here, right? <laughs> so, because uh, eventually Thor is to call Rocket a rabbit. And and Rocket's like, I'm not a rabbit. But he, I guess probably Rocket doesn't even know what that is. So, Thor is to eventually find out that Gamora is the daughter of Thanos. And so... Uh, we have Thor that is kind of just upset that he's in the midst of a uh, of a daughter of Thanos, but uh, really just uh, Star Lord is is to convince Thor. It's like, well, hey, like if anything, like she was just technically adopted, and like <laughs> and they're like like she doesn't like him, he doesn't like her, kind of thing, and so. Uh, so Thor is to go and try to comfort Gamora in her in her struggles and hard times, mentioning every single thing that had happened to him through all of the other Thor movies and how he lost his father and lost his mother and lost his brother and and his friends and everything, 
And so Star Lord is like, well, hey, yeah, like if anything, like I can also sympathize with Gamora. Star Lord is saying because like, yeah, like I lost a father too. Like I like, I also like uh, like lo- have have lost a family as well. And so like I I feel very sympathetic to Gamora. And so. Thor is going and stealing most of their food so that way he can go off on this uh, on this escape pod to go to uh, uh, oh my god uh, to the uh, place to speak with the dwarf uh, which is in the realm of Nivadalir Nivadalir and so uh, to speak with uh, Itri, uh, the king of the dwarfs, uh, because he needs to go and get another hammer. He needs to get a, another equivalent of Mjolnir. So, uh, so Thor is to go on with Rocket and Groot to Nivadalir and... The other Guardians are to go to nowhere to stop Thanos from getting the Reality Stone. And I hope that I will be able to cover all of this. Because, good God. So, uh... So... Oh my God. So... So that is to end up happening, and so they're going to nowhere, and so now we transition to Scotland, because uh, Banner had made the call, and so we find out that Scarlet Witch and Vision are in Scotland. So Both of them were in bed, and eventually Vision is to get out of bed because it seems like his stone is warning him of something. And Vision is to tell Scarlet that's like, hey, like, uh, like use your magic to try to understand what's going on with this stone because it seems like the stone is sending him a warning. So they are to get out, and so uh, Vision is contemplating taking a train to make his way back to the rest of the Avengers. And Vision is like, well, what happens if I miss a train? And and Wanda is like, well, you can get another one. Like, there's one that comes later. And so Vision is like, well, what if I just miss all the trains? And so... Wanda is like, well, like, what do you mean? And Vision's like, why don't we just kind of just stay here? And so once that is to happen, we are to have uh, Corvus Grave and Proxima Midnight appear in Scotland to try and fight uh, both uh, Wanda Vision, basically, the combination of the two. And so Corvus Grave is to try to fight... Uh, is to try to fight Vision, and Proxima is to go and fight Wanda. So, eventually that leads with a pretty decent scuffle that is to eventually lead with Wanda and Vision fighting Proxima uh, and uh, Graves into eventually this uh, subway spot, which is to eventually showcase a guy in the shadows. And so, uh, like, and also Vision has to make the crack that they should have stayed in bed because otherwise they wouldn't probably be fighting these people quite so quickly, but it would have happened eventually. So, a man is to come out of the shadows to have uh, Midnight's staff. And so we are to see that this is Captain America, all of a sudden, all the other, uh, I guess you can almost call them secret Avengers, is coming out of the fray and is starting to uh, defend both Wanda and Vision against uh, against the uh, Thanos children. And so they're pretty 
they're doing a pretty decent job of it to the point of eventually black widow taking down corvus grave and eventually both midnight and uh grave are outnumbered and so eventually they end up teleporting out of there and so like midnight kind of threatens that they'll come back and they'll come after uh, vision eventually but so all the avengers that are here are to regroup onto a ship and so widow is to mention to uh, vision how he should have stayed hidden and that eventually they should have called uh like they should have like kept in touch and so vision is like well yeah that's great and all but like we wanted our privacy uh because uh bruce was to talk and ask about vision to tony and tony was to say yeah like Vision's been offline for a while, and I don't know exactly where he is, but there probably might be one guy who knows, and that's Steve. That's why Tony was going to call Steve, but then all this stuff happened in uh, where Tony was at, and so battle cons battle happens, or fight happens. So, uh, really that takes uh, pretty much a bulk of what is to happen in Scotland. So... Uh, really, I feel like I'm, uh, I'm missing something, because I feel like I'm missing some, like, Thanos stuff, uh, that is happening here. Um, so, uh, Thanos is to, uh, let's cover the Guardian stuff. So... Yeah, let's let's cover. Ooh. No, let's not. Let's not cover it. Uh, so, oh my God, there's too much to cover. <laughs> I'm freaking out. Uh, so, uh, so. Let's cover the Thor stuff so we can kind of finish that up so that's perfectly fine. And then I can kind of prepare for when that is to actually happen in this movie. So, uh, so Thor is to go to, uh, Nevedalir to, and, and before that is to happen, Thor is having this talk out with Rocket and, and they are to, like rocket is kind of giving thor a prep talk a pep talk kind of wondering where his head is at because every one of his family is all dead and where is thor like really at and thor is like falling to pieces and thor is like well like but if i get my hammer like i'll like i'll beat thanos like and Rocket is like, well, yeah, but, like, Thanos has already beaten you. And so, like, Thor is like, but he hasn't fought me twice. <laughs> like, and beaten me. So I still have a chance. And Rocket is just like, oh, my God. Like, this guy is just, like, he's falling apart. And I need to, like, kind of see where he is. But this guy, like, let, just let him go. Because, like, I am not going to be able to... Uh, stop this guy from his one goal left. And so we head to uh, Nivadalir to eventually showcase that this place is not what Thor exactly remembers. And so eventually when Thor is to arrive at this place to see this dwarf king... Uh, he is the only one actually left there because we find out that Thanos had made his gauntlet at this place at Nivadalir and and had killed every single uh, person under like 
had killed any single person besides um, Itri and left him alive to have his uh, hands be turned to stone. But if anything, like, uh, the gauntlet was made. So, now, Thor is to try to have to reset this whole place because some stuff has been in space so long that eventually it's starting to freeze over. So now Thor has to try to, like, make this place working again and is to, like, start, like, going on with Rocket to try to use his strength to be able to get things to work back again, get things to start rotating, and eventually start to uh, start having this be a mining facility again to eventually make Stormbreaker. Stormbreaker evidently is to be like such a powerful thing, like so powerful that is that it's able to kind of create its own Bifrost. So for us knowing like Thor movies, like the thing that Heimdall would be able to do, like through like having put that sword into that one spot, like Thor can take Stormbreaker and do that anywhere now once he's to get Stormbreaker because this thing is a much better hammer than Mjolnir is. But, like, <laughs> Thor, I guess, probably just has the ability to fly anywhere, but still. Uh, anyways, so, uh, here's the thing. So, when Thor is to put uh, Nivaldalir back together, eventually once the one uh, thing is to go into, like, the star to try to uh, create lava and melt things... Uh, is to eventually just fall apart and break. There seems to be a piece that broke. And so now Thor has to almost go into a uh, self-harming mission to eventually get this uh, piece to hold together for this star to uh, go, f go uh, thrusting through Thor to eventually make Stormbreaker. And so... Like, there's this funny moment where um, Itri is basically telling Thor, like, repetitiously, like, dude, you're gonna die. And, like, and, like, Thor is, like, uh, like, so, like, uh, so it'll probably kill me. And Itri is, like, well, technically that's what dying is. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you're going to die probably from this. And if you don't. It's a one in a million thing. Uh, so Thor is to go and uh, do this thing, hold this thing there for a couple minutes. And like this star thing is thrusting through Thor. And so Itri is kind of calling out to Thor like, okay, just hold it, hold it. And so uh, the metal is to be made. Uh, Itri is to kind of quickly bash this thing down to make uh, the, uh, the, the metal pieces of Stormbreaker, but there is no handle. And so uh, Itri is desperately like help having Groot like figure out where the handle is. And so Groot just makes a handle. And because Thor just goes flying back into... Uh, the place where Itri is, and Itri is kind of scrambling to get the handle because Thor needs his hammer, and that's the only way that Thor is going to be able to heal from this severe injury. So Thor is having his hand out, lightning is starting to happen, and so Groot is to go and make his hand into a handle and give it to Thor so Thor can kind of revive himself with this hammer, and to eventually make his way uh, to Wakanda. So I kind of covered all that, thank goodness. Uh, so uh, let's actually cover some early Gamora stuff, because I think that's, uh, that's important. Uh, so uh, 
let's yeah so we are to see thanos eventually going and taking down a world previously uh like in some timeline where thanos is to meet gamora on zen who barry zen who bury i'm gonna ill pronounce that so that place where gamora's homeland was uh it's probably like it's z-e excuse me z-e-n-w-h-o-b-e-r-i and so thanos is to meet gamora there and is to eventually take her from her family and thanos is to give uh, Gamora a certain blade that she is supposed to balance with her finger and Thanos is consistently making this girl concentrate on balancing the blade while everyone behind her of her planet is to get wiped out and killed uh, with the exclusion of some of the younglings or the young ones so that way eventually that creates balance on this planet so like uh people will never get hungry they'll have full bellies and like everyone will be obedient because it eventually will be that way so uh so now I'm pushing on so let's focus on the guardians of the galaxy making or half of the guardians of the galaxy making it to nowhere so Nowhere is, of course, where the Collector is. Nowhere is, of course, where the Reality Stone is. And so now the Guardians are so, like, amped up because of, like, yeah, like, I want to go and get me some of that Thanos. And so, uh, reasonably, we have in this spot here where... Uh, Ah, uh, let me pause here for a second. Okay, now I feel like I can trust where I'm heading because I'm like, I am so confused. So I feel like I can trust where I'm going now. So we'll we'll head here. So, so I was thinking about, am I going to have to pull this all out and just like try to like get like back into it? But I think I might be fine now. Uh, so, uh, so... We're into we're going into nowhere, and so the guardians are making it to the collector's place to see that he is getting stepped on by Thanos, and the collector is to mention to Thanos that he had sold the reality stone, and Thanos is like, "I'm sorry, you would not have sold that. If anything, you are like you are not the person that would take something that valuable and sell it to anybody. It would be like torture to you, or it would be like a horrible thing for you to do. And like, it's kind of interesting when the guardians are talking to Thor about, uh, having to go to nowhere to get this stone from the collector, because really they're like, man, it, it would be a, like a stupid thing to take a uh, infinity stone to the collector and Thor is like, well, maybe it's a genius thing. <laughs> like, ugh. so, because I guess the collector would actually desperately want to hang on to this reality stone and kind of lie about it so that way he can keep it to himself. So, the Guardians are to see Thanos uh, going and chucking the Collector into some case because the Guardians are wanting to, like, go in there guns blazing and Drax is wanting to get his revenge for his family and, like, people are starting to move and Peter is trying to tell them what to do but no one's listening. So Mantis decides to... or. Peter tells Mantis to let Drax sleep. Drax falls to the ground, and so the Guardians are now trying to hide from Thanos, but Thanos knows what's up. So, let me pause here for a second. All right. So, 
uh, Thanos is to uh, is to kind of sniff the Guardians, the, kind of sniff out that the Guardians are coming. So what ends up happening is that uh, Peter is to call out to people to go certain directions. They completely ignore Peter and just go willy nilly and do whatever they want. Gamora is to go up and to strike down Thanos and start uh, like stabbing him into the chest and in the neck. And Thanos is to drop and Thanos is to die. Thanos is to tell Gamora why as he is to die. So Gamora is to kill Thanos and she is to be crying the entire time. And so after Thanos is to supposedly die, we have the Collector who is to be in his little cage or his little like uh, locked place. And he's like, magnificent. <laughs> and he's clapping and everything like that, kind of showcasing where this is going to head. So. Uh, so. Thanos is to pull the wool over Gamora and all the Guardians' eyes. And Thanos is to mention, like, oh, Gamora, like, tears for me? Like, I didn't know you cared. And so Thanos is to showcase that actually nowhere is actually has been decimated and they fell into his trap because he already knew that they were coming and he already has prepared for this for a very long time to wait for Gamora to show up. So this is to eventually have Thanos grabbing Gamora. And so Gamora had talked to Quill while on the ship. Uh, while, like, Drax was eating a Zarg nut and pretending that he was supposedly invisible, mentioning that he was so still that no one could see him. And, like, Peter could see him, Gamora could see him, Mantis could see him, and so Drax is like, ah, crap. So he walked off. But Gamora was asking Peter that if she was to ask him to take her life, that he would do it without question. Like, that he would promise to do so. And now that promise is going to come into effect. So, Peter is to appear in front of Thanos and Gamora. And Gamora is telling Peter, it's like, now, now's the time, do it now. And Peter is to have his gun out, and and so uh, Thanos is kind of surprised that Gamora is like, oh, so you told him, like you told him where eventually we'd be going. But here's the thing, like Gamora didn't tell Thanos exactly where uh, the Soul Stone is, but eventually she'll be forced to. So... And Gamora is desperately telling Peter to do it, do it now. And so Peter is to pull the trigger on Gamora, but only Bubbles is to is to come out. And so Thanos is to go on to basically use the reality stone to uh, basically like disarm or dismantle all of the guardians. So that way uh, they won't actually go after Thanos. And so... Thanos leaves with Gamora to go to, uh, eventually, uh, to eventually go back to his ship, uh, because he needs to get information from her, and so that will happen here shortly. So, when eventually I get through a lot of other stuff. So, uh, uh, so now Vision and the Avengers, technically I guess I can call them Avengers so it's an easy thing to say. The Avengers are to make their way back to the Avengers compound. The uh, Falcon, uh, 
Steve, Vision, Wanda, Widow, like those people all make it back to the Avengers compound where Rhodey is now talking to Thunderbolt Ross and kind of mentioning about uh, the things that were to happen from Civil War. Like still talking about the Accords, still talking about uh, how uh, Steve didn't sign over things and that Thunderbolt Ross wants Rhodey to arrest all of the Avengers, but Rhodey is like, sure, I'll get right on it. And so Rhodes is to basically disconnect the conversation with Thunderbolt Ross. And Rhodey is to mention to all these guys, it's like, well, yeah, I'm going to get a court martial because of what I just did. And that also that he's not going to arrest these Avengers. And plus also... Uh, Thunderbolt Ross, before he was connected, had talked to some of the Avengers, had talked to a widow, had talked to Steve, and, uh, like, they were, like, trying to, like, say, like, hey, like, uh, like, we weren't with you then, but we're with you now, and, like, you're gonna need, you're gonna need us to eventually go and fight your battles for you, so, like, all this stuff in the past has to be squashed temporarily, because there's a bigger threat here. There's a bigger form of war that is going on right now. So, uh, and so they're trying to figure out where exactly would be a perfect spot to hide out vision. And Steve is like, you know what? I think I have the perfect place. And so all of the uh, Avengers plus Rhodey are making their way to Wakanda. And so... Uh, uh, so Black Panther is to give, uh, is to give Bucky a new arm and to mention it's like, okay, like you've been, uh, he's kind of been sleeping for a very long time now. We need to wake him up because we need him like to be another guy in this fight. And so Bucky's like, well, hey, where's the war? So getting him going. So uh pushing on so the avengers are to make their way to wakanda and so uh bruce is kind of like should we bow should we not bow like wh what is the thing here and Rhodey is like yeah like he's a king like you should bow like you should bow to these people and so bruce bows and and black panther is like hey like we don't do that here and so bruce gets back up and Rhodey is like ha 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 i got you because you're stupid. <laughs> so, uh, and so the Avengers are going in here, and so their plan is to, uh, I, I'm going to have to pause here again. Good God. That's what happens when you do a, a review in the middle of the day. Things happen. Uh, <laughs> life happens. And so, yeah, like, so, uh, So uh, now Avengers are talking to Black Panther and uh, kind of telling, like, giving them the heads up that, hey, like, we need to figure out how to take Vision's uh, stone out of him. And so, Suri, you need to be on that. And so Vision is to try to get his stone out of him. And so Suri is like, well, why didn't you just disconnect these in a certain specific way? And Bruce is like, well, I didn't know we could even have done it that way. And she's like, yeah, like your your way is so much more difficult than the way I would have done it. But boo hoo, like it, stuff happens. So eventually uh, we push on here to uh, eventually have like Black Panther saying like, dude, like we're going to have a war here. And so we need to get everyone prepared. Like all our defenses need to be set. Cause if anything, like these black order people will not like take down our defenses. And so I think we should be fine. Uh, if anything, get Captain America a shield and like, cause we're going to war, like get everyone set up. Uh, like Banner is not going to be able to, uh, Hulk out here. So if anything, they are going to send him Hulkbuster armor and just get him as prepared as they can be 
as well as everybody to fight the onslaught that is going to happen. We have Umbaku and basically every single like Black Panther tribe here to defend Wakanda to try and save Vision uh, from this battle. So, uh, so that is to be happening. So, let's go back into space. Uh, so, Ebony Ma is to be uh, kind of uh, having all these knives that are to be around Doctor Strange. Supposedly, these were... These little knives were actually to perform kind of a very microscopic surgeries, but I guess now they're just used to, I guess, just torture people and to just kind of like keep them at bay from using any kind of power. So if Strange is to use his power, a needle or a knife or something will go into him. And so like Strange isn't being able to use any of his powers because a knife will go into somewhere of his body. So... Uh, so Tony and, uh, Peter are to be, uh, eventually, like, Peter is to show himself that he's a stowaway, and Tony is wanting to get to Ma, but eventually he finds that Peter is on the ship as well, and so Tony is saying, hey, why are you here? Like, if anything, like, you shouldn't be here, and Peter is like, well, you can't, uh, like, uh, you can't be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man if there is no neighborhood. And so Tony is like, oh, okay, like, I get it. Like, if anything, like, uh, you want to be a part of this big battle. And so I guess I will just, like, have you, like, and me come up with a plan to save Strange. So, uh, so really, Tony and... Uh, Peter are seeing Ma and like seeing what he's doing and so Peter is to come up with a plan and so Peter is mentioning to Tony hey have you ever heard of a movie called Aliens <laughs> and Tony's like ah uh, like I don't get your pop culture references kid it's like because <laughs> like it gets to the point where, like, uh, Tony starts to get to annoy, to be annoyed with uh, Peter's pop culture references, because eventually uh, he is to mention something else about aliens. And so, like, Peter, Tony is just getting annoyed with Peter. But anyways, so, but uh, it seems that Tony is to go with Peter's plan because Peter has seen more movies. So, Tony is to appear in front of Ma and to try and take down Ma and Ma is kind of telling like Tony it's like well you're no real threat to me and Tony is like well like I'm not a threat but the kid is because he's seen more movies so what Tony is to do is to go ahead and shoot a uh, a hole into the ship which is to suck ma out of the ship and freeze him and basically kill him so but that also leads strange almost flying out of the ship as well and so peter is to use the iron spider suit to go and collect strange and bring him back onto the ship and then uh tony is to go and use his nanotech powers to rebuild this wall back up. So, uh, so, Strange is having a plan of wanting to run and hide now because if anything, he wanted to fight with this stone before and this stone might be used as a really, like, convenient weapon. But now that he's at this spot, he wants to run and hide. And so Tony is like, oh, so now you want to run and hide now. Like, now you want to not just, like, like, now you want to just be, like, a scaredy cat. Like, if anything, like, you're probably worse than, like, Peter is. <laughs> like, so Tony is like, well, you know what? How about instead of running and hiding, how about we actually take the fight to Thanos? 
Like, how about we go wherever this ship is going to have us go to and take the fight to Thanos? Come in there with a plan and try to take Thanos out. Try to get the gauntlet off of him. And so Strange is just like, okay, well, like, I think I can go with that plan. And so what ends up happening is that uh, Tony and Peter now have to figure out a way to land this ship onto this planet called Titan. And so they are to eventually land this ship and eventually meet the uh, other Guardians without Gamora uh, and try and like hold these guys up because they don't know who anyone is working for. Tony doesn't know who the Guardians are working for. Uh, the Guardians don't know Strange, Tony, and Spider-Man, who they are all working for. And Peter is freaking out because he doesn't want any alien to uh, put eggs inside of him. <laughs> and so, and Tony is like, like, I hate your pop culture, culture references. Stop this crap. So, uh, so the very next thing for us to see is Gamora talking to Thanos. So Gamora is to be at the throne of Thanos and Thanos is to give Gamora food, which she is to chuck against this throne. Thanos is to mention, it's like, well, hey, like I thought you liked it here or whichever. And so Gamora is to mention how she hated it here, how she hated the throne, how she hated him and everything. And so Gamora is to eventually need to tell Thanos where the soul stone is. And Gamora is like, well, like I never figured out where it was. Like I never figured out exactly where it was. And so Thanos is like, well, I think I can heavily disagree. Like, the thing of it is, and the thing that I never taught you well, is how to lie, and you lie badly. So, Thanos goes with Gamora to Nebula, because Nebula had tried to sneak into Thanos' uh, ship uh, at some point of time, and tried to kill Thanos in his sleep. And so they grab Nebula and are now like putting or tearing her apart piece by piece to try to get information from her. And so eventually uh, they are to tear away from Nebula some recording that was of a memory of Gamora mentioning that she had found where the soul, where the soul stone was and that Thanos is like, okay, well, you're going to tell me exactly where it is, or I'm just going to keep tearing, uh, I'm just going to keep tearing Nebula apart. So, Gamora is to mention where the Soul Stone is, and it's at uh, Voromir. Uh, I guess some planet Voromir. So, uh, okay, I think I covered all of that. Um, so, after, after we have, uh, after we have, uh, Thanos going to, uh, Voromir, uh, we have Nebula who is to eventually break out of her prison and make her way to Titan where Thanos is eventually going to be. And so, and so let's get to the Titan stuff. So, uh, so after Tony is to talk with the Guardians and to just kind of swear up that, uh, that the Guardians are working for Thanos and neither are Tony and them, because, because <laughs> Strange is like, who is it that you work for? And Star-Lord is like, who am I supposed to say? Like, Jesus Christ? 
and Tony is like, oh, so you're like from Earth. And Star-Lord is like, yeah, like, I'm from Missouri. And like, oh, really? Like, so are we. Like, we're also from Earth. And so, like, if anything, they, like, like, Peter starts talking to Quill as if he's been on Earth since forever, and he hasn't. Like, he doesn't know about things because he hasn't been on Earth recently. So... Once Tony is to get uh, everybody on the same side, eventually Tony and Strange and everybody are to get onto Titan. And so Tony is to try to come up with a plan because he knows that Thanos is eventually going to come here. And so we have Strange who is going and using his Infinity Stone to go through like... Uh, like uh, Four million six hundred and eighty some odd uh, different realities or different timelines to see if they were to ever actually win this war. And evidently, there was one scenario where they were to have actually won. Uh, and so, Strange, I guess, is going with that one strategy. So, but Tony is to try and like get these guys like geared up. And Drax is to be, like, yawning, and Tony calls him on it. And and Tony's like, I'm sorry, like, are you yawning? Like, uh, and so, like, Peter is like, hey, like, uh, take it easy. And so, uh, like, Tony calls, like, the Guardians, like, plucky. And Peter's like, hey, don't call us plucky, because we don't know what that means. And so, really, like, Tony is to try to just, like, start to walk away from the Guardians and start to talk to Peter, because, like, I guess it's only just you and me, because, like, uh, like, like, Flash Gordon here is just kind of just, like, not, like, up to snuff. And so, Peter is like, well, hey, like, I kind of resent that, because, like, I'm, like, half human, and so the 50% of me is 100% you, so. And plus, also, I think Tony calls, like, Drax Mr. Clean, bizarrely. I don't know why, but it doesn't exactly look like Mr. Clean, but okay, I guess it's good enough. He doesn't have a white shirt on, but anyways, so... Uh, Mantis is to see Doctor Strange going through all these different timelines and find out the solution. And so, now they are to eventually just wait out for Thanos and finally come up with a true legitimate plan uh, where everyone is to work together. So, uh, and eventually Nebula is to come far too late uh, to this whole thing, but eventually she makes it on to Titan. So, now we're to go to, uh, Voromir. So, both Gamora and Thanos are to make it to Voromir, and so they are to make it to Red Skull, who is to mention, uh, that he has been stuck here, but eventually there was something that had consistently drawn him to this Infinity Stone. And so, since it was a thing that he could never actually grasp, like, he's just been protecting it all along because he has nothing better to do with his time. So, uh, Red Skull is to eventually explain to both Gamora and Thanos that... Eventually, this stone will cost uh, you someone that you have loved. And also, like, uh, the Red Skull is to just kind of, like, explain all number of things that are to be tied with this stone and so on and so forth, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, that eventually it's kind of like a, a leap of faith and, like, it's something that uh, someone is going to have to, like, yeah, whatever. So... 
Thanos is understanding what he is to do, and so all of a sudden he is to start having tears. Because Gamora is to tell Thanos, it's like, yeah, like, this is the reason why I never really thought we would get this far. Because, like, you hate everything, and... Like, you have nothing that you love and or anyone that loves you. And so, like, this would never be a prize for you to obtain through any of this. And, like, I'm paraphrasing a ton, but, like... So, Thanos is to go and look at Gamora and tear up. And Gamora is thinking that Thanos is crying because he is going to lose... And Red Skull is like, well, he's not crying for him. He's crying for you. So Thanos is to grab Gamora and Gamora is to try to knife herself in the chest. But uh, Thanos uses the reality stone to let her knife turn into bubbles. And like Thanos in his bubbles, bizarrely, he just has his bubble thing going on. So... Thanos grabs Gamora and sadly chucks her while he cries like a wimp. And so Thanos chucks Gamora and so then bizarrely, like we have a lot of scenes here that don't quite make sense to me where like I'm thinking that he might be in the reality stone. Like there's a lot of confusion towards like what is going on when Thanos does a lot of stuff in some of these parts where, like, eventually when he's to do the snap, what all exactly is going on with that, and so on and so forth. So, uh, but Thanos is to go and chuck Gamora, and then eventually he is to, like, uh, wake up into this water, and then eventually have the Infinity Stone, the Soul Stone, be in his hand. And so he's like, okay, here's another one on to the uh onto the set of things so now we are to uh like start to really uh prep up this whole like wakanda war so what is happening now is that uh it seems that uh, the Thanos children are to start breaching Wakanda. And so everybody's starting to gear up. And so uh, the Q ship is starting to like bring down certain like escape pods to the ship to drop onto Wakanda. And so uh, eventually they're starting to see like these creatures that are to be called... Uh, outriders are to start to make their way uh, through this like barrier. They're trying to force themselves through the barrier. And so this is where we have all the people that are starting to run because eventually they're like, hey, like we need to now defend this one small spot and try to make it so that we, we can kill all these things. Because eventually they're going to make it through the barrier anyways. It's inevitable. So everybody starts to run and everybody starts to now like start uh, like uh, tearing through these things and try to take these things down. And uh, eventually we have Thor that is to arrive via the Bifrost of him uh, performing the Bifrost with the uh, Stormbreaker. And so eventually Thanos is, or Thanos, Thor is to use his big, like, banging ability to take down a lot of these, uh, a lot of these Outriders. And so Thor is like, give me Thanos! <laughs> so now they're they're like consistently getting the onslaught of all, all these outriders and eventually uh like uh all the all the thanos children are also coming into the play also and there is eventually also this like big gigantic like 
uh, like grinding like weapon that is to appear to like also have these outriders just start to like chuck out of them and all kinds of things. So there's a lot of stuff going on in here. I'm going to try to like get to the best I can in describing all this because there's a lot of crap that just happens. And eventually, while this is to happen, like eventually the uh, Thanos children, whoever are to left, are to start to get like killed one by one. Like eventually, uh, like Wanda is to be stuck like protecting Vision, but eventually Wanda, like as the numbers are starting to dwindle, eventually Wanda is to have to come into the fray, and. Like eventually that leads to the death of Prox, uh, Proxima because uh, Scarlet is to use her power to thrust Proxima into this like this grinder weapon that the uh, that the Thanos children are to have and that obliterates Proxima and so uh, Okile is to or. Er, Koye is to mention like, hey, why is it that she was like not out here like fighting this whole fight with us? <laughs> so it's like because she was protecting Vision. Because immediately when uh, Wanda is to go out on the field, Proxima is to make the call that okay, Vision is defenseless, and so uh, some of Thanos' children try to make it to uh, to take Vision, and eventually Vision is to eventually get on the field. Uh, and so everybody is just trying to like fight out as much as they can. So uh, also they are to mention like Vision is to mention to Wanda that eventually uh, Wanda is the only person powerful enough to eventually destroy the Infinity Stone. And so eventually Vision might just have to die and Wanda is going to have to kill him so that way they can destroy the... Uh, the Infinity Stone. So let's put a pen in that and let's get into, oh, like, uh, Call. Like, Call is to eventually die because uh, Hulkbuster, because Banner's in Hulkbuster. Uh, Hulkbuster is to go and start fighting out Call. And eventually, Banner is consistently, like, talking with Hulk this whole time, trying to, like, get him to unleash, and he won't. So, Bruce is just like, well, hey, I'm just going to do this myself. And so, eventually, uh, Banner is to find the other hand, because one of the Hulkbuster's hands ends up getting chopped off. And so... Uh, Banner takes the other hand of Hulkbuster, the one that was chopped off, and uh, toss it onto Cull, and then Cull ends up getting skyrocketed into the Wakanda's shield, and then he ends up getting like uh, like crushed into pieces and killed. Uh, eventually, that is to only leave uh, Corvus grave or grave because. Of course, Ma is killed already. So, uh, and eventually we'll get to that. So, again, let's put a pin in that and let's go back to Titan. So, Thanos is to appear onto Titan. And so, the very first thing that he is to do is to talk to Strange. And Strange and Thanos are having this talk about Titan on how it used to be such a uh, used to be such a great place. How Thanos is mentioning like, yeah, like uh, like this was my home world and I tried to prevent its destruction. Like basically think of Thanos as like uh, Jarrell from Superman. Like there was something like going horribly awry in this planet and so Thanos Thanos was trying to prevent it but uh, this destruction of this planet was inevitable and so no matter how many times that Thanos tried to tried to plead with everybody to like hey like this is gonna happen if you keep going the way it's going 
and people just kept ignoring Thanos and did whatever they wanted, and that just destroyed this whole planet. And so Thanos is just like, well, okay then, like, I'm going to get the heck out of here because I know that this planet is going to kill itself, and it did. So Thanos is to showcase too strange what Titan used to look like and how, like, prosperous it was and and everything like that but eventually it just led to its own destruction and stuff happens so uh eventually after that little talk about titan eventually doctor strange is to get prepared for the battle that they are to have and so that leads with doctor strange using his power and so Thanos is kind of like, okay, bring it. So uh, that leads to Strange going and uh, like start using his power to start uh, putting in holes into a number of places to have the Guardians trying to hurt Thanos. Uh, we have numerous times where like Peter is to toss a bomb onto Thanos' back. Uh, Peter Quill... Uh, not Spider-Man. Uh, okay, so since there's Peter's here, I'm going to say Spider-Man and I'm going to say Star-Lord. So less confusion. So uh, Star-Lord is to eventually put a bomb on Thanos' back. Uh, Peter is to go repetitiously and, uh, and uh, just kind of goofily just doing like, uh like <laughs> hey magic <laughs> more magic <laughs> kick magic <laughs> like and like eventually thanos is to grab onto peter slam him into the ground and just like you insect so but eventually it just keeps getting to where all the guardians are to jump into fray to try to take thanos down eventually tony is to come into fray to try and uh like blast uh like thanos and so thanos just goes and collects all the blast that tony had given to him and put it back into the gauntlet and reverse it out to tony but like tony blocks it so eventually thanos is to decide to take a whole entire moon and to try to launch pieces at like Strange and everyone else because Thanos is tired of having Strange using his whole power to have him consistently be kicked by a number of people. And so Thanos is trying to take Strange out by giving him like bits and pieces of this moon, but eventually Thanos is also taking this moon and trying to crush Iron Man with it, which that's what he tries to do. So... But eventually, Tony is to recover from that to yell at Thanos. It's like, if you're going to hit me with another moon, like, like, because of, and also we, we start to see like Tony is starting to lose some bits and pieces of his nanites. Uh, and eventually he's like starting to have some kinks in his armor. So eventually here is the master plan. So uh eventually the first thing that is to happen is that uh Drax is to uh try to drop Thanos down to one knee and so uh uh Quill is to go and take uh one of Thanos's hands down with his l electric weapon and Peter is to go and uh, web up Thanos' other hand and, like, keep him, like, steady. But eventually, like, I think Peter transitions to the one hand that Peter, that Quill had his uh, electric weapon with, like, and so, uh, and so Tony is now grabbing, or no, wait, 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 wait. Uh, Strange had grabbed on to, uh, had grabbed on to Thanos' gauntlet hand, and he had, like, some magical powers to, uh, like, try to take this gauntlet off, but it didn't work. But 
like strange is trying to like hold him up and plus also like there was one moment where strange tried to have his cape leave him so uh thanos would not close his fist so that way like it would give people time to jump in and start hitting and clobbering up uh thanos so eventually tony is to be grabbing on to uh thanos's gauntlet hand mantis is to jump into the fray to uh try and force uh force uh thanos to sleep and so like everybody is like holding on to thanos as much as possible and so like star lord is now saying hey this was my plan like this is all me like and so nebula is to arrive on titan and now the big question is where is gamora and so star lord is like hey tell me you didn't do it like tell me like that gamora is okay like tell me where gamora is and so mantis is trying to get uh thanos to sleep Tony and Peter are trying to get the gauntlet off and they almost have it off. And like Tony is like, Hey Peter, like don't do anything because we almost have this thing off. We almost have, we almost got this. Like it's, it's almost happening. So Peter is to see that like Thanos is talking and Mantis is to mention that uh, Thanos is in mourning and Star-Lord is like, well, what do you have to mourn? And so Nebula is to mention that Thanos had went with Gamora to uh, Vormir and that eventually Gamora will probably not have come back. And so eventually that just leads to Thanos mentioning that he had to kill Gamora to get the stone. And then Peter Quill just loses it and like starts punching Thanos. And that like releases Mantis from Thanos. And like Peter almost has the gauntlet off, but eventually Thanos grabs the gauntlet with his fingers and re gets it back onto his hand. And so now everything that they did was all for naught because eventually like Thanos just out muscles everybody. And so like Thanos is now like taking everybody down, eventually reality stoning a lot of people, uh, like making it to where the guardians are just basically just like frozen where they're at so uh like eventually people are trying to make as best as defense as they can like iron man is like single-handedly trying to take out uh like thanos but like really tony is running out of armor and so <laughs> eventually like uh tony is to get this weapon and grab it to try to use it against uh thanos but Thanos is to grab this weapon from Tony and stab Tony with this. And so eventually they, uh, Strange is to now like is to make a bargain with Thanos to say, hey, if you'll let Tony Stark live, I will give you the infin the the time stone. And Thanos is like, oh, okay, like, I'll, like, I'll, I'll do that. There's so many times where Thanos lets people live, and I think a lot of the times that's actually a mistake. But I guess Thanos just doesn't care, because I think he just sees his victory to be inevitable, that he can just let loose ends happen. If he would have killed Thor, if he would have, uh, if he would have killed Tony... Uh, even after getting the time stone, like all of this would be over and Thanos would have been a winner, ch winner, chicken dinner, and no one would have been able to do anything unless they were to re 
have like if they could rebring Tony back to life, then uh, so Thanos is to get the time stone, and now all he has left to do is to get uh, Vision Stone. I think that's the Mind Stone. So, uh, and so now back at Wakanda, now like Thor is back with everybody, and so. Uh, <laughs> and so now Thor is talking to Captain America. He's like, hey, like, you copied my beard. And, like, Steve is like, yeah. <laughs> like, so they're kind of, like, trading tips. Like, uh, like, Captain America is mentioning to Thor. It's like, hey, like, you cut your hair. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like, you grew out your beard. Like, you're copying my beard. And, and Steve is like, yeah, yeah. So... Uh, so Thor is introducing, uh, Captain America to Groot and Rocket. And so Groot is to say, I am Groot. And, uh, Steve is to say, I am Steve Rogers, I guess. Like, cause he doesn't realize that there's going to be a certain dialect for Groot. Uh, oh, also, uh, Thor evidently can speak Groot because evidently he had an elective of learning Groot speak in uh, in Asgard. So I guess bizarrely Thor knows how to speak Groot. Maybe that might come to handy in some sequel, maybe. Uh, so, like, we have that goofy moment, but we have it to where, like, it's a big fight out going on. And so... Uh, and so recently, yeah, like there's big, huge fights. Everything's popping off. And so I'm trying to figure out exactly how to perfectly like transition here. Um, so because uh, I think I covered most of the stuff. Uh, so Thanos is to make his way to uh, Wakanda. And so we have Vision who is now forcibly on the field and Corvus Grave is going after Vision. And so eventually we have like Captain America and any number of people trying to protect Vision. And like also like Wanda is also there to try to also protect Vision as well. So like there is a whole bunch of like fighting going all over the place, but eventually Corvus Grave is with Vision and so eventually like Captain America is telling Vision to get the heck out of here but eventually while Captain America is to uh, go and try to fight some people Vision is to stab Corvus Grave in the back and kill him off and Vision is to mention to Captain America it's like well, like, I will not trade lives. Like, I will not trade one life for another. Like, I will not let someone else die because of me. So, like, that's the reason why Vision is in this fight. And so, Captain America is like, okay, fine. But, like, things are gonna happen. So, Thanos is to make it here. And so, all of a sudden, everybody is to kind of uh, get their way close to Vision. And so... Like, when Thanos is to arrive, we are, ha or we have, like, Hulkbuster, who is to try to take him down, and immediately Thanos just, like, swat swats Hulkbuster away, and, like, keeps him casing in, uh, cased in, like, this stone. Uh, Widow tries to come at Thanos, and Thanos just, like, has her, like, buried under a bunch of rocks, uh, Captain America is to try to, like, uh, like, repetitiously come and try to get to Thanos, but, like, at first, like, uh, Thanos just kind of, like, swats, like, Steve away like a fly, and he goes, like, flying off, but eventually Steve comes back to the fray, like, sliding in, trying to, like, tear off the gauntlet of Thanos, but, like, Thanos is too strong for Steve, and uh, eventually Steve just gets freaking knocked down yet again, uh, I guess to be, like, 
encased in stone like any number of people. Uh, uh, War Machine is to try to make a defense against Thanos, and Thanos just takes uh, War Machine and just, like, squeezes him like a pop can, and so, like, uh, War Machine just drops because, like, he can't, like, he can't do anything. So, Thanos is continually going and going, and so, uh, Vision is to tell Wanda, it's like, now is the time, you need to destroy this stone, it's like, if anything, you're the only one that can do this, and so Wanda is to go and, uh, and use her power on the stone, and like basically consistently use her power and so everybody is trying to prevent like thanos even like black panther just like starts to run up on thanos and like thanos grabs like black panther's neck and just chucks him which is freaking sad like he goes freaking flying and it's just like sad so thanos is to uh kind of barrel through everybody and so Wanda is trying to destroy this stone and then she does. And so uh, Wanda is to fall over because she is now like has lost her her love of her life. And Thanos has now like like has like gone right next to Wanda. And Thanos is like, I know exactly what you mean. Because at some point, uh, Thanos is to eventually see Gamora again, but see her as a young girl, I guess is probably some memory of his or just something that he can kind of go to at some point to live a moment of time. So, um, but Thanos is to know exactly what Wanda is going through. And Wanda's like, you have no idea what I'm going through. Because she's lost everything because of Thanos. And and eventually, like, uh, Thanos will realize that when it comes to Endgame. So, uh, so Wanda is to, uh, like, try to use her magic against uh, Thanos. And it's putting up a pretty decent defense. But eventually, Thanos is to take Wanda down. And to mention, it's like, well... Um, like, time will kind of, like, will help everything. We'll cure all wounds, we'll, we'll cure all wounds and everything like that. And so, Thanos is to use the time stone, turn back time to where Vision is still alive. And Wanda's like, no! And so, Thanos is to quickly take the mind stone from off of Vision's head. Because Thanos is a grab vision's neck take the stone and put the stone into the gauntlet and so wanda is to just be like no but there's nothing she could do at this point so uh we have the last gun in the or the last bullet in the gun to arrive which is thor uh, because even Groot tries to make a defense and like Groot's taken out freaking like everyone's taken out like this scene is freaking amazing that everyone is involved in this and they all get taken out every single one of them like even Falcon is taken out it's crazy so like this is the best scene of this whole movie and I'm having huge difficulties explaining all of this for how much it like is holy crap this is almost two hours so, uh, now we are at the point of, uh, like, Thor coming in as the last, uh, bullet in the chamber. And so, he is to have Stormbreaker, he is to shove Stormbreaker into, uh, Thanos' chest. And so, Thanos is, like, muttering something, and Thor is like, what? What are you saying? And... Thanos is like, you should have went for the head. And so, uh, Thanos is to snap and 
Thanos is like, or and Thor is like, what did you do? No! <laughs> Thanos is to escape. Thanos is to leave. And so all of a sudden we are to figure out what had happened. Everybody is confetti away Thanos style because of the snap. And so a whole bunch of people are all to be uh, written out of existence, technically. Like people are to still know they are still alive. But half of this world is to be no more until maybe a sequel is to happen. Maybe, maybe not. So uh, everyone is to assumed to be dead. And if you probably have seen any number of Spider-Man sequels, maybe <laughs> you'll know, you'll know. So, but anyways, we see a bunch of people who are to vanish. Winter Soldier, Vanish, Falcon, Vanish, uh, T'Challa, Vanish, uh, some people in another movie, Vanish, but I can't mention that because people need to see Ant-Man and the Wasp, because uh, I just realized that. Uh, <laughs> I think Suri, or Shuri, Vanishes, uh... Uh, Groot vanishes. Uh, Doctor Strange vanishes. Spider-Man vanishes in a very horrific and sad scene where uh, Tony is to watch the entire Guardians just vanish in front of him. And so all of a sudden, uh, Peter is like, like, I don't feel so well, Mr. Stark. And you're like, no, Peter. <laughs> like, don't give me that. Like, I hate this scene. And I wish that I could, like, watch it on mute. Because at least then, like, I won't almost have a freaking tear in my eye for how emotional this scene is. Because, like, uh, because Peter is saying, I don't want to go. And so Peter is starting to vanish in, like in front of Tony's eyes. And so like Tony is trying to comfort Peter and hug him, hold him tight and just be like, no, I don't want you to go either. And so eventually Parker is to fade away and to be like dust, like everyone else. So, which only leaves uh, really just Nebula and Tony left on Titan eventually also Doctor Strange confetti's away and so uh, both Nebula and Tony are going to go on the uh, Milano and and eventually have to try to figure out a way to get back to Earth and eventually that will be Endgame's beginning sequence but like, I'll get to that when eventually we get to Endgame, when eventually I have the energy to get into Endgame, which is three hours. So I'll try to, I hope to condense down that movie, but it looks like I can't even be able to condense down this movie. So, uh, so yeah, like, everyone is a fade away. I'm not going to say every single member of anybody. Uh, like, more than likely, somebody will be like, oh, yeah, like, you forgot about so-and-so person that faded away. And, like, that was an important thing for you to mention that this person faded away. I'm like, okay, sure. Um, but, yeah, like, a lot of people had vanished and gone and whatever. Uh, most of the Guardians are gone. Uh, so, with the exclusion of Rocket. So, uh, like, yeah, I think I have covered... Oh, uh, and Strange, before he was to leave, was to mention to Tony that, like, this was the only option. Like, this was the only, like, way that they were going to win. And so they had to just lose for a while until they eventually come up with a plan. Because some person at this point right now is in the quantum realm. And... Hank, uh, Hank and, uh, Wasp and someone else, which I will not mention because watch Ant-Man and the Wasp, 
uh, someone is in the quantum realm, and there is going to be something going on with that. So, uh, check out if I ever, I don't think I'm ever going to do an Ant-Man and Wasp review. Uh, but, like, go ahead and just eventually check out that movie, because eventually I'm, I'm trying to, like, give some, like, continuous to a, the next big thing. But I'm also realizing that I should probably get the heck out of here. So the very last thing that we are to see is to have Thanos like be a winner who has won. And so now Thanos is at his home planet that is to be planet 0259S, um, also known as the Garden. And so that is where Thanos is to retire off of when he has won. And so eventually we will see what happens with Thanos being at the Garden in Endgame. We'll see the continuation of that because eventually the Avengers are going to try to make their way to the Garden and see where that see where that goes. But uh, if anything, a lot of this stuff will happen five years later <laughs> so uh i'm not gonna try to get into any much of more end game spoilers but just kind of like tell people like okay this is what happens but other than that i'm gonna get the heck out of here i've talked for this for two hours goodbye everybody bye everybody